let us see a numerical example uh, which is uh, including a concept of short circuit MVA. This example will show us that this short circuit MVA concept is very useful in fault calculation. Now let us see what is the numerical example. We are given that uh, there is a very large power system. This power system is having a short circuit MVA of 8 per unit at 440 volt base. Okay. And this is connected through a line to a bus which is numbered 1 here. And this bus is supplying power to two motors M1 and M2. The rating of these two motors is 1 MVA each at 440 volt. And the transient reactance of each motor is 0.1 per unit. We are also given that the line is having a reactance of 0.05 ohms. Now, it is told that the voltage at bus 1 is 400 volts. Okay, what we are asked, we are asked to find the transient fault current for a three phase fault at bus 1. So, how to proceed in such kind of numericals? Let us see. We are assuming that the base values for the power system are MVA base, let us say, is 1 MVA, voltage base is, let us say, 0.44 kilovolt or 440 volt. Okay, so I am assuming these two base quantities. Now, it implies that the x theonin in per unit for this power system is simply 1 over 8 because I have chosen the same base voltage which is given for the power system and it comes out to be 0 0.125 per unit. Okay. So, this power system can be approximated by a reactance equal to J0.125 per unit, okay, at a voltage of 1 per unit. This is having a voltage of 1 per unit. Now, this power system is connected through a line. which is having a reactance x line. Now, the z base for line is simply kilovolt line to line squared base over MVA base. It implies x line in per unit is simply 0 0.05 divided by z base and z base is simply 0.44 squared into 1 and it comes out to be 0.258. So, this line is simply having a reactance of 0 0.258 per unit. Okay. Now, this is the bus 1 with voltage V is V1 is equal to 400 volts. So, in per unit is simply 400 divided by 440 and it comes out to be 0 0.909 per unit. Okay. Now, these, these are two motors with XD prime. Since base voltage and base MVA is same for the system, so it is simply 0 0.1 per unit. And for the second motor, it is again 0 0.1 per unit. Now, let us assume that the given scenario is like this and there is a fault here, three phase fault here. So, what will happen? 
the fault current will be comprising of two parts. First part is being fed from this side of the power system. That is, this power system is feeding the uh, current fault current. Similarly, this will feed some current and this will also feed some current. Okay. So, the fault current IF dash is nothing but the voltage here, which is not simply 0 0.909. So you see, what I am doing now, I am just finding the fault current. So, what I will do, I will deactivate all other sources. That is, I will deactivate this. That is, I am using the Thevenin method just to find the fault current. So, I will deactivate this source. I will deactivate these two sources. Okay. So, what I will do, I will find the fault current because of this voltage only. So, it is simply 0 0.909 divided by the sum of these two reactances. 0 0.125 plus 0 0.258. This is the fault current being fed from this side. Okay. Now, what is the fault current being fed from this side? It is simply 0 0.909 divided by this reactance J0.1 plus 0 0.909 divided by J0.1. So, on solving, this comes out to be minus J 20.55 per unit. Now, from the assumed base values, I know that the I base is nothing but 1 MVA divided by root 3.44 kV and it comes out to be 1.312 kilo ampere. So, in amperes, the fault current is simply 20.55 into 1.312 kilo amps. This is the magnitude only. So, it comes out to be 26.96 kilo amps. Okay. So, in this way, I will utilize the concept of short circuit MVA to find the fault current. Even though I did not know various elements of the power system and uh, there is no requirement to know that because we are given short circuit MVA of the system. So, I came to know the reactance value of the power system and I knew all other values. So, it was it is very simple for me now to calculate the fault current in this way. So, this example serves as a concept building example to calculate the fault currents using the short circuit MVA concept. Now, we will see another example uh, which will involve similar concept for the short circuit MVA in the next slide. Now, let us see the second example for the short circuit MVA concept. Let us see what is that example. We are given that there is a power system with a, a generator bus having two generators and a transformer and a circuit breaker B connecting the bu uh, bus number 3. Now, this generating station is connected through a reactance X which we do not know the value and a transformer to an infinite bus also. That is, this, uh, this bus is being fed from this side also and these two generators are also feeding this bus and it is giving some uh, power to the load. Now, various values or ratings of uh, the machines are given here. That is, generator 1 is having 25 MVA base uh, and 0.15 per unit, it's a subtransient reactance. Similarly, the generator 2 is having 50 MVA rating, 0.2 per unit reactance at its own nameplate rating. T1 transformer, this is T1 transformer is having 100 MVA rating and 0 0.08 per unit its reactance. Similarly, this is transformer T2, it is having 40 MV rating and 0.1 per unit on its own base. Okay. We are given that this circuit breaker can have a maximum short circuit MV of 
333 MVA. So we are required to design or the value of x such that this circuit breaker does not have to uh, interrupt the uh, fault which is having a short circuit MVA of more than 333 MVA. And we are asked to assume appropriate voltage basis. So let us see how to solve such kind of example. What we will do first, we will try to take some base voltages and MVAs so that we can find parent values. So base, I am assuming that MVA base is 100 MVA. Now voltage assumed is such that the these are in sync with the transformer ratios. Okay. So voltage base is chosen here. Let us say some value is chosen here. Now that will transform through transformer ratios with appropriate voltage basis. Okay. So the short circuit MVA in per unit for the circuit breaker will be simply 333 divided by 100 is equal to 3.33 MVA. Okay. So the X theminine seen by the circuit breaker, the value which can be, you know, the uh, rated value which can be seen by the circuit breaker for the power system behind it is simply 1 over 3.33. And it comes out to be J 0 0.3 per unit. Okay. Now for this whole MVA base, I will find various values XD1 double dash, XD2 double dash. XD1 double dash will be 0 0.15 into new MVA base over old MVA base and it comes out to be 0 0.6 per unit. XD2 double dash is nothing but 0 0.2 into new MVA base over old MVA base. It is 0 0.4 per unit. Okay. And XT1 will remain same 0 0.08 per unit xt2 will be changed and it will be 0 0.1 into 100 over 40 or 0 0.25 per unit. Now I know the reactance value for this transformer it is 0 0.08 per unit. Okay now I know these values also 0 0.6 per unit 0 0.4 per unit. Now we know that up to this point, up to the breaker, the total reactance in per unit is simply 0 0.3 per unit. Now this transformer is having a reactance of 0 0.08 per unit. So up to this point, up to let us say this generating bus point, the reactance will be simply X theonin per unit minus XT1 and it is some simply 0 0.3 minus 0 0.08 and it comes out to be 0 0.22 per unit. Okay. So up to this point, this power system can have a reactance value of only 0 0.22 per unit. Okay. So it implies that 1 over 0 0.22 is the limiting value and it is equal to 1 over this reactance in parallel with this reactance in parallel with the series of these two. Okay. So 
this is 0 0.6 in parallel with 0 0.4 in parallel with this series of these two xt2 which is simply 0 0.25 Okay, now from this equation, I can easily find the value of x. j is common, so I have not written anywhere the j. So it implies x will be simply 2.39 per unit. So you see that to limit the short circuit MV of the power system up to maximum 333 MVA, this reactance will have a value of 2.39 per unit if it is having a value less than this then the circuit breaker might fail on the faults uh, or its contact might melt because of excessive short circuit current so you see that this example is again a very good example to learn about the physical importance of or the practical importance of this short circuit MVA concept. Now in the next lecture, we will try to solve one or two numericals on the fault calculation for a symmetrical fault on the power system. So if you find that this lecture is helpful to you, then please share and subscribe my YouTube channel. Thank you.